<laughs> this thing is so accurate. High pressure compressed air is vital for today's modern PCP air gunner. That compressed air, for most of us, comes from a bottle. But that bottle has to be charged somewhere. And normally, that's going to be a good drive away. And a pump, well, I don't even own a pump anymore. If I try and pump something up to 250 bar, it feels like I'm going to die. <laughs> And at some point in your life, you're going to be asked to inflate the latest toy or paddling pool, probably by a child on a beach on a nice hot day, unlike today. Or you've got your own personal inflatable toy, which is just between you and it. Takes all sorts, really. And if your bottle's empty, who's going to blow monkey? I can't really say that, can I? That sounds quite wrong. So what's needed is a source of high pressure air that doesn't involve a bottle and doesn't involve you pumping yourself half to death with. That solution also needs to be mobile. I might just have the answer for you. Watch on. This is my Air Venturi compressor, which I've had for just over 12 months. In the last 12 months, it's topped up all my bottles and all my guns and allowed me to make all my videos. It has been my absolute lifeline. But there is an engine in there and that engine needs to be serviced. And when you buy one of these, it doesn't come with a little batch of fairies that live in there doing all that for you. No, you've got to change the oil and top the water up yourself. But some people think that this is a bit overkill for the average home user. You might be right. So what you could do with is something that you can plug straight into your gun, top your gun up and go. And that device would need to be portable. So when Pyramid Air and Air Venturi send me this box and tell me that what is in here answers that request, I'm very interested. So let's take a look inside and see what we've got. Now, firstly, on the box, it's quite clear. It says made in China. However, this has come to me from America via a courier, UPS to be precise. So it's obviously gone through the Pyramid Air system somehow. Let's open the box. We've got some instructions. And then we've got, look at that, that's really nicely presented. I'll show you that. You've got all the bits and pieces that you need all laid out in the top. Lift that off. Ah, oh, ho, ho, we like that. Look at that, I didn't know that. Let me lift this out because this is quite nice. It's in a bag. Look at that. Wow, it's in a bag. Look at that. Just see if there's anything else in there. I don't think there is. Wow, okay. Quick tip for the box. That's a really good sturdy box. Fill that full of some stuff and you could stick targets on there. Look at that bag. We like that bag. Wait, and you've also got like a little pouch on the front look, I think. See, so you can put all your bits and pieces in and there's a carry strap in there. We're gonna undo the top. The Velcro, there's another nice bit of padding in there. There's a quality check card and then we're just gonna, I assume, lift it out. Look at that. Look at that, that's a lovely looking simple unit. Clearly, there's a size difference. What I need now is a quick cup of tea, a read of the manual, and then I'll explain it to you. In 
in the box with the compressor you get an easy to understand instruction manual you get the hose which connects the compressor to the gun and spare air filters which sit just inside there you get a power lead mine's got an american plug on it i'm not in america but it's only a british kettle lead so i just need to change that over some 12 volt leads to connect it to a 12 volt power source lots and lots and lots of spares and some feet extenders and o-rings and fuses and you also get a plastic bottle which you're supposed to put some silicon oil in it would be better if that had silicon oil in it rather than me now having to buy some silicon oil this is the nomad 2 there was an original nomad compressor which had a separate power unit outside but this is the nomad 2 which has everything built in should say two on there really anyway it's 27 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters high and it weighs eight kilos and that handle is really good for getting it around now it's got lots of buttons and switches on there so let me explain to you what they are i'm just gonna do that first what i shall technically call the front of the compressor has the pressure release valve so once you finish charging you would undo that to let the excess air out you have the connection to the hose which goes to the gun and then you've got the housing for the burst disc and that should burst just past 5000 psi if you've set the compressor that high you've probably done wrong let's be honest on the side is the fan housing which keeps the compressor cool so you don't want to cover that that's not a good idea always keep that clear you've also got a little hole here for putting your silicon oil into every four or five fills it says you want to put in two or three drops in there on this side there's a fuse just there and the spare ones in the packet and that's where you connect your 12 volt battery cables up here is where you plug in your mains cable again there's vents here don't cover those that would be a very silly thing to do the back of the compressor just looks pretty except for this sticker down here which tells us to look below and underneath there's another valve that's your moisture release valve now you should only ever undo that every say 18 to 20 fills there's a secondary moisture system in here and that's how you would drain it it's also on the bottom got an led light array because every compressor needs a disco Also, in the pack, you've got these feet extender blocks. So if you just want a bit more height on your compressor, all you do is undo the leg, put the block on like that, see, and screw it back on. And that then is just gonna raise the compressor up a little bit higher, should you so wish. On top of the compressor, there's the vents for the power inverter inside. You don't wanna cover those gauge is really easy to use the black needle tells you what pressure the compressor is working to and then you've got the silver needle which tells you where the auto cutoff is set to it'll go up to four and a half thousand psi or 300 bar no problem at all most of my guns finish or max out at around 250 bar or three and a half thousand psi set your needle there when that black needle gets to the silver needle it cuts out simple as this is a load gauge it does not tell the user a great deal if it gets to 30 it will cut out if the gauge climbs near that it may be a good indication to add a drop or two of silicon oil what i've noticed if it is less than five when you're charging you've probably forgotten to tighten up the pressure release valve and never leave the compressor alone while it's charging just to be sure these two buttons here are super important when you want to start charging, you turn this one on first. This turns the fans on inside the compressor and starts all the other systems running inside. Then, when you've got all that going, you then actually turn the pump on itself, which is that button there. Once you've got to the auto cutoff point, that will automatically turn off. So all you then need to do is press that button to turn the fans off. However, if during the charging process you decide that you want to stop the charging process you can do you just press the off button but you cannot press the on button again until you've bled the air from the front of the system it's a safety system built into the compressor before i go any further with the setup i'm just going to put in my two or three drops of silicon oil 
The compressor will run on 110 or 240 volts, but the switch on the inverter is buried deep inside the compressor behind some wires. So I would suggest that you tell the person you're buying the compressor from which power setting you want it on before they send it. Failing that, it's all clearly explained in the manual. That doesn't sound too complicated. It's basically on, on, charge, off, go shoot. This end clips onto the front of the compressor. Inside this end is also where your air filters sit. And it's got a lovely big O-ring and there's your air filter. So if you ever need to change your air filter, you just undo that and take it out. There we go. And then we screw that back together. The filling hose has a standard male and female foster fitting. So all you do is clip that on like that. In the kit, you get a blanking plug and you use that for testing the compressor. So you pop that in the end there like that. And then what you can do to make sure everything is working correctly is you can set this to say, I don't know, 2000 PSI, 150 bar, and then you go ahead and you run it just to make sure that the system is working and the auto shutoff is working correctly. So I'll turn it on. There you go. You can hear the inverter fan. That's always running when there's power to the compressor. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the system fan on. Let's just check that we've closed the pressure release valve. Here we go. Oh, look, the lights come on the bottom. And you can clearly hear that the fan has started. It's not too noisy though. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the compressor on. And we're pumping air into the hose. I can see that the load gauge is going up, it's working away, and I can see that the pressure is also building on the needle for the compressor. And let's just see when we get to a point in a moment if the auto shutoff works. Here we go. There we go, lovely. So the compressor got to the shutoff level, it's shut off. All I need to do is let the air out the front. There we go. And I can now go ahead and turn the system off. So that's a quick and easy way of checking that everything is working with the compressor. So let's go ahead now and actually charge a gun. I'm desperate to see how good this thing is. So the first gun I'm gonna charge is my FX Impact. I've had this one oh, a couple of years now. It really is my go-to rifle. It's 2.2 caliber, UK sub 12 foot pounds. I'm getting like 600 plus shots from one charge on this. And that's a carbon cylinder 480cc bottle. Currently sat on about 150 bar. You can shoot it a lot lower, it'll still keep going. But I just want to see how quickly that will get to 250 bar. The reason for that being is because I also shoot an impact in 30 caliber and it tends to be sort of like you've got a refill once you get down to around 150 bar topping back up to 250. So it's kind of interesting to me to find out how well this is going to work on a 480cc cylinder. So here we go. Switch on. And I've set my gauge to just below 250 just to be sure. Everything's running. I'm going to turn the system on. I'm going to set my stopwatch going. Just going to double check everything is on there nice and firm. There we go. And I'm going to start. The pressure has to build with the compressor up to the level that the gun's already sat on, which is about 150. So when it gets to about 150, that's when the compressor is going to start working a little bit harder. So there we are, the needle stopped on 150 and the compressor is now boosting the charge in that bottle. A couple of things that Pyramid Air say is that really you don't want to run this for any longer than max, I would say 15 minutes when you're charging a gun. It is designed 
only to charge directly to the rifle. So if you've got a bottle or a cylinder, then that's fine on your gun, you can charge that. It is not designed to charge bottles as in external tanks. Let me show you one. So if you've got something like this, okay, that is not going to charge this. In fact, I think probably warranty wise, if Pyramid Air or Air Venturi get a sniff of the fact that you've been charging these with that, they're not gonna cover you under the warranty. Also, you're really not gonna do it any good. You might charge it once, maybe twice, but then it's going to damage the compressor because it's not designed to fill this much in one go. So like I say, max 15 minutes run time for every charge. In fact, the smaller the better. So always be mindful to top up whenever you can. If you're lucky enough to buy a brand new gun and it arrives and it's got no air in it at all, no worries, you use the Nomad 2 to charge and go out and get shooting. And then once you drop down on pressure on your rifle, you simply use the Nomad to top yourself back up and then you can keep chucking lead down range. Wow, look at that. We're on four minutes and we've done well over 50 bar already. That's pretty good. So I'm not gonna, oh. In the middle of talking, it's finished. Look at that, it's done. And oh, stop the clock. So I reckon that was around Let's turn that off as well. Actually, let's bleed the air out first. There we go. Let's turn them off. So in the middle of my conversation there, the compressor finished. So that's very impressive. From a 150 bar level on here with a 480cc carbon tank, up to 250 has taken me five minutes, 35 seconds. That's pretty good. And how's the gauge on the front of the impact looking? <laughs> on the nose, right on the 250 line. That's very good. Right, now you're gonna want some numbers on what it takes to fill other guns. I'm going to tell you now. UK sub 12 foot pound FX crown or impact, 70 bar to 250 bar on a 480cc bottle, 12 minutes. USA high power FX crown or impact, 150 bar to 250 bar on a 480cc bottle, 5 minutes 30 seconds. 230cc cylinder air arms Galahad type, UK sub 12 foot pound, 100 bar to 230 bar, 4 minutes 19 seconds. FX Dreamline UK sub 12 foot pounds 250cc 70 bar to 230 bar 4 minutes 31 seconds. US High Power Dreamline 150 bar to 230 bar 3 minutes 20 seconds. Pyramid Air states on the website that a complete fill of an empty 250cc cylinder is around 9 minutes. A 480cc bottle empty to 200 bar is around 17 minutes. Also on the Pyramid Air website, you can buy the silicon oil required to be used with the compressor. UK shops need to show an interest in this like Blackpool Air Rifles is. And the official importer is Highland Outdoors. The best visual example I can give you of what the Nomad 2 compressor can do is that today I've charged these six rifles. It's taken me 26 minutes total to charge six rifles. At the end of those 26 minutes, I've now got 1,900 shots to take before I need to start putting air back in guns. Now, if I was filling from my bottle and filled these rifles, by now, this would need topping back up. But not anymore. With the Nomad 2, I simply reconnect this, wait a few minutes, and then I'm out shooting again. What's really cool is the Nomad 2 will run off a 12 volt car battery. You don't need to plug in anything extra, you just use the supplied wire. You must first connect your clips to the battery and then plug in to your compressor. And you hear the inverter start up. At this point, I would run the engine just to be sure you're not gonna flatten the battery. Just going to run the compressor up to test that that's working. 
off we go. And then I'm going to have a moan, and it's about the included 12 volt wire. That thing is only just over a meter long, so it just reaches the floor, but it is a bit tight, and that's not good enough. You see, I'd never put my gun on top of a working engine while I charge it. No, 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 no. What I'd prefer to do is put that in the back or somewhere to the side on a table. So that wire needs to be longer. But never mind, because I got an idea. Nearly there. Done. I've been to my local auto electrical store and I'm just going to make them longer. Something to point out, and they told me in the electrical store, I wouldn't go trying to convert this into a cigarette lighter holder adapter. It probably won't go well on the fuse board inside the car. Their advice was looking at this, always run it straight off the battery. And they also said, always use the right wire that's capable of doing the job. Remember, I am not suggesting that you do this. It's just what I'm doing to make the wire a bit longer. Look at that. So, for just a few pounds, I've made that longer and it's now four meters. There you are, see? I'm now charging at the back of my truck. That's it, all done. I like the idea of connecting the compressor to the 12 volt car battery so much, I've tried to be clever and I've gone and bought a standalone car battery to see if I can run the compressor from it. Nope, that doesn't work. You need to connect that to a running car engine while you're charging using the 12 volt system. And when you're using that 12 volt system to charge your rifles, I didn't notice any massive increase in charge time either. Maybe around 15 to 30 seconds if I was going to be picky, but that's nothing, is it? So with the Nomad 2, I'm charging here. And I can also charge my gun here. I'm cold. I'm very cold. It's the middle of winter and I came out in the wrong coat. I should have come out in my shooting coat. Middle of nowhere. I can also inflate the darling child's paddling pool out here. Monkeys now getting pumped with a cracking view. I don't think I can say that either, can I? Hello! I'm Superman, look! Saxophone. This one, I'm gonna call the Kim Jong-un special. He's a little pink flamingo. Woo! To finish then, this is a home portable air gun compressor. No bells and whistles, it just does exactly what you expect it to. Is it the end of the bottle for high capacity requirements at the range? No, probably not. And for some of you, you might still need one of these. But compressed air has arrived at home via the Nomad. Have you spent our money on these inflatables? Yes, yes I have. Yes. Did you realise that the two lines here mean the Nomad too? I do now. <sighs> Idiot. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe and then you'll get alerts on all the latest air gun reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.